It is time to put all of our information that we've learned in this section together to graph polynomials. Section 4.1.5, graphing polynomials. Example 4, graph by finding the following information. So our function is f of x equals 2x cubed times x plus 1 squared times x minus 4. Let's determine the end behavior. The end behavior, remember, is given by the leading power function. Since this polynomial is in its multiplied out form, we can't just look at it and determine the leading power function. We have to anticipate what would it look like if I multiplied out all of the terms? What would the highest powered term look like? Notice our leading coefficient is two, and the shortcut to do this is just to sum the exponents on each of those factors, three plus two plus one gives me six, so the highest powered term would be two x to the sixth. So if I were to carry out all of the FOIL and the distributive property, the first term would be two x to the sixth power. This is an even degree power function, so we can expect the same end behavior. Whoops same end behavior. Remember, even means same end behavior. Make sure that you distinguish the even and odd rules for the leading power function corresponding to end behavior with the even and odd rules for the power on a factor or multiplicity behavior at an x-intercept. We've talked about even and odd in a couple of perspectives in this section. Now, since it is even, we can compare it to our simplest even power function. That is the x squared function. It has a positive leading coefficient, so we know it's going to open up. So this polynomial is going to have the same end behavior as our x squared function. That is the left and right sides both rise. And don't forget, you could easily verify that with your graphing calculator. Next, let's find the zeros. So to find the zeros, we're going to set our polynomial function equal to zero and solve for x. The good news about this example is that it is already factored for us. We don't have to work so hard to find the zeros. So we set each factor equal to zero, starting with this first one. Notice if I set this factor equal to zero and solve for x, we'd start by dividing by two, and then we would take the cube root of both sides. We would end up with x equals zero. So one of my zeros is zero, but notice it came from a factor with an exponent of three. What that means is it counts three times, has multiplicity three. So for example, if I look at this equation right here, that means if I wanted to factor it, I could say that's x times x times x equals zero, and I would get the same answer three different times. That's kind of the idea of multiplicity. We've learned that at a zero of odd multiplicity, the graph is going to cross the x-axis. Moving on to our next factor, the zero there is negative one but it came from a factor with an exponent of two. So we say the zero negative one has multiplicity two. Again, if I look at the details, just to reiterate what we learned about multiplicity, x plus one squared is really x plus one times x plus one. If I set each of those factors equal to zero, I'm just gonna get negative one two times over. So I get a repeated zero or the same zero twice. So again, we can say the zero is negative one and it repeats according to that exponent. At a zero of even multiplicity, the graph is going to bounce. Our third and final zero here is x equals four. The exponent on the factor that it came from is one. At a zero of odd multiplicity, the graph is going to cross. So again, make sure you go back and distinguish the two perspectives here. We're using even and odd in combination with our leading power function to determine end behavior. Does it rise or fall? Here, we're using even and odd multiplicity to determine the behavior of the graph. Does it bounce or cross at that zero? Okay, next we're going to find our y-intercept. How do you find a y-intercept? Well, the same way you always find it, set x equal to zero. So I'm looking at the original function. 
Over here we have an f of x. We know that's the same thing as y. And we're going to plug in 0 for x. And then we will calculate. Now, notice right here we have 2 times 0 times some other stuff. But who cares what that other stuff is? Because when you multiply by 0, you get 0. So it looks like our y-intercept is the origin 0, 0. Now, let's plot the information that we have on this graph. I'm going to start by recording information about my end behavior. We decided that the left and right sides both rise. So I'm just going to write myself a note make sure both sides both, both rise. Then our zeros are x-intercepts at 0. The graph is going to cross, so I'm just going to write c for cross. At negative 1, the graph's going to bounce. And at 4, the graph is going to cross. Then we can put our y-intercept there. Well, we've already got it there, don't we? Um, the x-intercept and the y-intercept are the same. Now, at this point, we could begin to make a sketch of our polynomial. So I'm just going to do it in a, a really light color. We know the left side has to rise, and it has to bounce at this x-intercept, which means it has to turn around somewhere, come back down, and cross. Somewhere down here, it has to turn around and come back up here and cross, and then rise beyond that. Okay, so that's the general behavior of the graph. The only thing that we've approximated here are the turning points, the maximum and the minimum. So I'm going to use my calculator not only to verify the information that I've already plotted, but also to uh, determine those turning points. Let me slide over here. I'm going to type in the function exactly as it appears. 2x to the third x plus 1 squared x minus 4. And remember you can do zoom 6. That's the standard viewing window. Always a great place to start viewing your, calcul viewing your graph. So what I can see here on the left side, it does look like it's bouncing at negative 1, crossing at 0, crossing at 4. But I'd rather see a little bit of a clearer picture on the left side. So I'm going to use another zoom option. I pressed my zoom button. I'm going to choose number 2, zoom in, and press enter. Now, it's not going to do anything until I tell it where to zoom in. Right now, it's centered at the origin 0, 0. That's a great place to zoom in. So I'm going to zoom in at the origin. And then I can see a whole lot more detail. And we can approximate the turning points a little bit better. So back over here on our graph, we can fill in a little bit more detail. Looks like the maximum is less than 1, and it kind of squiggles through the origin. So we know it's going to do something like this, maximum less than 1, and then kind of squiggle through. And then I'm going to go back to the standard viewing window, zoom 6, and approximate the minimum between the next two x-intercepts. Now, what I see here is that it is off the grid. So that means this is decreasing quickly. Somewhere down here, it's going to hit a minimum and turn back around. And we'll just indicate that approximately on our graph. If we wanted to calculate or get a better picture, remember you have another option here, zoom out. That's zoom number three. Make sure you press enter when you get to the graph. And you could continue searching. Uh, until you found that minimum. In the case of the grid that we have, our sketch is sufficient. Notice even when we zoomed out, that minimum is still down below the viewing window. All right, so that is a pretty complete picture of this polynomial graph. The domain is negative infinity to infinity, as it always is. And the range would be from whatever this minimum value is on up to infinity. And again, we could continue searching with our calculator, but it's not necessary for our purposes. Okay, let's practice that again. We are going to start with end behavior. The end behavior is dependent on our leading power function. In this case, since it's in this multiplied out form, 
we can quickly spot that leading power function. Notice the difference in the way this polynomial function is expressed and the previous example. The previous example was in factored form. That sure made it convenient for finding zeros, but I had to think a little bit to get that leading power function. In this case, it's in that multiplied out form, so I can quickly observe that the leading power function is x to the fourth. That is of even degree, so should, I should expect the same end behavior. In fact, it's going to do the same thing as our x squared function does. And so it looks like left and right sides both rise. And I can make a note of that on the graph. This side is going to rise and this side is going to rise. Next, we will find our zeros. Zeros are obtained by setting the function equal to zero. And then we can work on factoring the polynomial. Have you ever wondered what would you do if you couldn't factor it? Well, that's what we're going to study in the next couple of sections. Notice here all of our terms have a greatest common factor of x squared. So we can factor that out. That leaves behind an ordinary quadratic trinomial. And that quadratic trinomial will break down into two binomials. We could factor it x minus 4 and x plus 2. Setting each factor equal to 0, including this little monomial factor, our first 0 would be 0. Notice, though, it has multiplicity 2. So at a 0 of even multiplicity, the graph is going to bounce. The next 0 comes from this factor. The exponent on that factor is 1. So we have a 0 of 4 multiplicity of 1, the graph is going to cross. And the last 0 comes from our last factor. The 0 is negative 2. The exponent on that factor is 1. Add a 0 of odd multiplicity, the graph is going to cross. So we can go ahead and make a note of that on our graph. Graph crosses at 0. I'm sorry, it bounces at 0. At 4, the graph crosses. And at negative 2, the graph crosses. Now, when the polynomial is given in this form, the y-intercept is also very easy. If you'll remember, when we studied quadratics, whatever constant we had out here was the y-intercept. That's going to be true for a polynomial in this form as well. Remember, when we find a y-intercept, we set x equal to 0. If I plug in a 0 for all those x's, notice it's just going to leave behind whatever constant is out here. In this case, since we don't have a constant, our y-intercept is 0. So the x-intercept 0, 0 corresponds to the y-intercept 0, 0. We have another example of concurrent x and y intercepts. Now, this is enough information to get the general behavior of the graph. It's going to rise. It's going to have to cross through. That means it has to turn around somewhere, bounce. It's got to turn around somewhere, come back up through, and then rise beyond that. To get a more accurate uh, graph, specifically regarding the maximum and minimum values, we can type in our original function into our calculator. So let's get that set up. Our original function is x to the fourth minus 2x to the third minus 8x squared. Now remember, we messed with our viewing window last time. So I'm going to go ahead and do zoom number 6 to go back to the standard viewing window. And that's going to always be a great place to start when you're examining your graph for the first time. So looking at our uh, calculator, I'm going to press my trace button. And I'm going to come down to this minimum and just approximate it. It looks like when x is about negative 1, y is about negative 6. So I'm going to put that on our graph when x is negative 1. And again, that's an approximation. And it looks like the other minimum value is down below our grid once again. So we will just reflect that when we make our graph by hand. So I'm going to make it a little steeper than I approximated at first. 
we'll pick up that minimum, bounce here. We know the minimum is somewhere down below our grid. It's going to cross here and then rise beyond that. Okay, so that is a pretty good, accurate sketch of our polynomial function. Let's do one more example for this section. On example C, notice the form of the polynomial. It's in that multiplied out form. So our leading power function we have to really think about. I'm going to take the leading coefficient, negative 5, and then anticipate if I were to multiply everything out, what would be the power of our highest powered term? Remember, you can find that by summing all of your exponents. So what do we get there? 8, 9, 10, 11. It looks like negative 5x to the 12th. No, I'm sorry. How about 13th? 5x to the 13th. 1 plus 3 is 4, plus 5 is 9, 9 plus 4 is 13. So it is an odd power function. We can expect opposite end behavior. Since it is odd, we will compare it to the odd power function x cubed. However, notice because we have a negative leading coefficient, we need to compare it to negative x cubed. Negative x cubed um, is going to behave the same way that negative 5x to the 13th behaves. So the left side is going to rise and the right side is going to fall. We can go ahead and put that on our grid. Left side is going to rise, right side is going to fall. Back to finding zeros. It's really convenient to find zeros when your polynomial is already factored for you. We set the function equal to zero, and then we would set each factor equal to zero. This is a great example to really reinforce multiplicity as well. So the first zero comes from this first little factor, x equals zero. The exponent on that factor is one. So this has multiplicity 1. At a 0 of odd multiplicity, the graph is going to cross. The second 0 comes from this factor. It is x equals negative 6. Its corresponding exponent is 3. That means that factor repeats 3 times. That 0, negative 6 repeats 3 times. At a 0 of odd multiplicity, the graph is going to cross. OK, you tell me, what is the next 0? Hope you got x equals 2, and its corresponding multiplicity is what? 5. At a 0 of odd multiplicity, the graph crosses. And our final 0 is negative 2. Its multiplicity is 4, so the graph is going to bounce. Now, another thing I want to point out here, remember we figured out our leading power function was degree 13. That means that we can expect at most 13 zeros or 13 x-intercepts. We only ended up with 4 x-intercepts. But remember, some of those are repeated zeros. So notice what happens when we sum the multiplicities. When we sum those numbers, we get the exact degree. So when multiplicity is considered, we, ha we, ha we have exactly 13 zeros. It's just that some of those repeat. Now, let's find our y-intercept. Uh, actually, let me go down and, and plot those on our grid. Um, zero is going to be cross negative 6, the graph is going to cross. At 2, the graph is going to cross. And at negative 2, the graph is going to bounce. OK, finding our y-intercept, as always, we set x equal to 0 and solve for y. So remember, the left side, f of x, is the same thing as y. And I'm going to plug in a 0 for x. Notice it doesn't really matter the value of all these other factors because we have 0 times something here. So once again, we get our y-intercept to be the origin, same as this 0 right here. And we've already got that on our graph. So we can sketch based on what we know so far. The left side is going to rise. It's going to have to cross here, which means turn around somewhere 
bounce, turn around somewhere, cross, turn around somewhere, cross, and then beyond that it is going to fall. So that is a good initial sketch. Then to finish the job, we can uh, plot this function on our calculator. Okay, let me scroll back up here. Look at our original function. This one's a long one. Negative five X. I get the idea that this one's gonna be off the grid as well, because the more terms you have, the higher the function grow or the faster the function grows. But at least we can examine behavior at our x-intercepts. Make sure our x-intercepts are right. Okay, I'm going to go with zoom six again. Let the calculator get that graph going. We want to compare it to the one we did by hand. Oh, that one's not that exciting. I would say that our graph by hand is much better than the graph on the calculator. What's going on, again, because we have a 13th degree polynomial, this function is growing very, very fast. And so it looks like it's achieving its maximum and minimum off the grid. It's just a very steep function. But I can see the left side rises. I can see it crossing at negative 6. I can see it very subtly bouncing at negative 2 crossing steeply at zero and then crossing again at two. So I'm going to clarify my function, just making it very, very steep and indicating that those minimums are occurring off the grid, right? It bounces here, goes down, turns around somewhere, crosses very steeply through the origin, turns around somewhere way up high, and then crosses down below. Okay, and that is a clear sketch by hand. This completes the section on graphing polynomials.